to this UWA Study Smarter video all about writing clearly and concisely in engineering at UWA. I'm Siri Barrett-Leonard. I work with the Study Smarter team at the University of Western Australia and we've designed this video for three reasons. This video will help you write clear sentences, build cohesive paragraphs and be concise and accurate. Each topic takes about five minutes. Pause the video whenever you like. Let's begin with writing clear sentences. We'll start with the basics of clear, simple sentences, then look at how to vary what we write. To write a clear sentence, first indicate the subject early on. The subject tells readers who or what the sentence is about. Second, follow this subject swiftly with a complete verb. Verbs are doing or being words. Complete verbs show past, future, or present time by changing their form. Third, if you need one, place an object straight after the verb. Objects tell readers who or what the verb is affecting. Keep these three elements close together and choose strong, dynamic, active verbs where you can. These three elements make an independent clause which can form a simple sentence. You can expand simple sentences by adding more words to the subject, verb, or object, making the subject more precise, changing the verb form if you need to, or qualifying your object, narrowing its scope like this. These techniques help you flesh out your ideas and make your writing more interesting to read. You can also make your ideas clearer by telling the reader when, how, and where events are taking place. Ideally, add this information around clauses. You can put some of it, for example, before the subject, and some of it after the object as well. In this way, your subject, verb, and object are still close together, and your ideas are easy to read. But for clear writing, we need to avoid two things. One is overloading sentence beginnings like this. When we overload sentence beginnings, it taxes our reader's memory and makes our writing less clear. Secondly, we need to avoid putting a lot of detail in the middle of clauses like this. Putting a lot of extra information in the middle can make sentences difficult to read. So for clear, long sentences, keep subjects, verbs, and objects close together and avoid overloading the beginning or the middle of sentences. So far, we've been looking at simple sentences and how to vary them. Simple sentences have one independent clause and express one main idea. You can also vary your writing by creating compound sentences. These combine more than one main idea. Let's look at two different ways to join these ideas. One way is to use semicolons. Semicolons work especially well when you use them to join clauses that are similar in structure but have contrasting ideas like this. The second kind of compound sentence uses coordinating conjunctions to join ideas. To remember what coordinating conjunctions are, just think of the word fanboys. Use the first letters of this word to remind you what they are. Coordinating conjunctions express simple relationships between equally important ideas like this. As we've seen, compound sentences add variety to your writing. Another way to vary your sentences is to create complex sentences to express more complex relationships between ideas. There are three main techniques for creating complex sentences. First, you can use subordinating conjunctions to join a subordinate or less important idea to a main idea. If you think of the word sub, it will remind you of some examples of subordinating conjunctions. Subordinate clauses can come before or after independent clauses, as in these examples. Second, you can use a relative pronoun, like who, which, and that, to join related but less important ideas to a main idea. You can put relative clauses early in the sentence as part of the subject, or later on as part of the object. And third, you can use a participle to join a partial or incomplete idea to a main idea. Participles often end with ing, like these words. You can put participle clauses before or after independent clauses, 
as in these examples. In summary, you can write clear sentences for engineering if you do all these things. Let's now turn our attention from sentences to paragraphs. We'll look at what cohesive paragraphs are, how to construct them, and how to tighten links between sentences. Remember to pause the video whenever you need to. Good writers ensure their paragraphs are cohesive, which means their paragraphs feel tight, their ideas seem to belong together, and their writing just flows. Let's explore how they do this by taking a look at a cohesive paragraph based on one in which Caroline Bailey and Rita Armstrong discuss new approaches to development. Pause this video while you read this paragraph, then we'll look at what makes it cohesive. Three things make it cohesive. Paragraph structure, sentence structure, and sentence links. Let's take a look at each of these in turn. If we look at the paragraph structure, we can see that it begins by stating topics up front. It then develops these topics in the remainder of the paragraph. In addition, the paragraph begins with simple, short, familiar information and concepts, which are followed by new, long, complex information and ideas. The paragraph's topic development structure and its movement from simple, short, familiar information to new, long, complex information help the reader prepare for what comes next and greatly assist cohesion. Sentence structure also contributes to cohesion. Like the paragraph as a whole, the front of each sentence begins with simple, short, familiar topics. And the back of each sentence develops these topics with new, long, complex ideas. Just as paragraph structure and sentence structure aid cohesion, so too do sentence links. These include front-to-front -front and back-to-front links, as well as explicit cohesive markers. When you link sentences front-to-front, -front, you take ideas from the fronts of sentences and include related ideas in the front of subsequent sentences. When you link ideas back-to-front, you take ideas from the backs of sentences and use related ideas at the fronts of other sentences. Explicit cohesive markers like connectives or transition words can also make writing feel more cohesive, as can pronouns, words like this, these, it, they, and so on. The best writers use a variety of front-to-front -front links, back-to-front links, and explicit cohesive markers. There are two things, however, that can disrupt cohesion. Imagine, for example, if the writer included this extra sentence and this extra connective, however, in the paragraph we've just looked at. The extra sentence contains information that detracts from the writer's main point. In the context of this paragraph, this sentence is irrelevant. In addition, the use of the connective, however, is confusing and makes no logical sense. It's an example of false cohesion, or trying to make ideas seem cohesive when they're not. In summary, you can write cohesive paragraphs for engineering if you follow these guidelines. Once you've written clear sentences and cohesive paragraphs, take time to review your work. Proofread to make sure you've been concise so that every word counts and accurate so that sentences contain correct punctuation, spelling, referencing and grammar. We'll start by looking at some sentences that aren't concise. As you read each one, think about how to trim words and tighten expression. Pause the video if you need to. Here's the first example. It begins with, it's evident that. Get rid of this slow wind-up and any other vague words to make the sentence tighter and clearer. Here's another one. This example is cluttered with unnecessary words like which and that. 
try to trim unnecessary words from your writing where you can. Take a look at this example next. Here the writers use several words that mean the same thing. Get rid of any doubled words and any other words that are redundant. What do you think of this example? Here the writers used many long phrases where short ones would do. Try to shorten phrases where you can. Here's a final example. The problem is the writer overuses passive voice and nominalizations, which are nouns made from verbs. If we use more active forms, our writing will be more concise. When writing's concise, it's easier to check for accurate expression. The sentences we'll look at next illustrate some common mistakes that have to do with sentence boundaries. In other words, not having control over where one sentence ends and the next one begins. As you look at each sentence, try to spot the mistakes and think about how to fix them. Pause the video while you do this. Have you spotted what's wrong with this sentence? This sentence uses comma splices to join sentences together. To fix comma splices like these, you can either place a full stop, a semicolon, or a coordinating conjunction between them. How about this sentence? What's wrong here? This isn't a sentence at all. It's a sentence fragment. It doesn't contain a subject and a complete verb that shows past, present, or future time. Fix sentence fragments by joining them to another independent clause or by adding a subject and changing the verb to one that shows time. Let's take a look at another example. This is a run-on sentence. It includes several sentences that need to be split up. Here's one way of fixing the sentence, using full stops. What do you think of this? If we do this, we've created another problem, choppy sentences. Several short sentences placed one after another like this disturb the flow of writing. Try getting rid of unnecessary words and combining the ideas within one or two sentences if you can. Here's a final example. What's wrong this time? This final sentence is a stringy sentence. It uses the same coordinating conjunction and to join a number of ideas together in the same sentence. An easy way to fix a stringy sentence is to combine some ideas together into a complex sentence, getting rid of unnecessary words if you can. We've looked at problems with sentence boundaries. Let's take a look now at a few other examples of sentences with common mistakes writers often make. Again, try to identify the mistakes as you read. This is a mistake with spelling. The writers confuse two words that sound exactly the same. Make sure to proofread your work for this mistake. Here's there's a problem with apostrophes. Check you've used these correctly when you write. Would have is okay when speaking, but when you write, use correct verb forms. The mistake here is with pronouns. And this example needs a citation. Make sure to reference ideas you take from other sources. Finally, when you write lists, make sure your grammar makes sense. This applies both to bullet point lists like this and to lists within sentences.
In summary, you can make the writing you do for engineering concise and accurate if you do these things. We hope you've enjoyed this video and that it helps you write clear sentences, build cohesive paragraphs, and be concise and accurate so that when you write for engineering, your papers are easy to read and have impact. So long from me, and remember there's lots of help available from Study Smarter at UWA. For example, you can download survival guides from our website. These are handy one-page advice sheets on topics that can help you with your studies. You can also get other Study Smarter YouTube screencasts to help with your writing. Good luck with your writing, and see you soon.